video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called serialize and deserialize a narrative tree. So in this problem, it's very similar to the serialize and deserialize binary tree problem. For this problem, the difference is that we're using a narrative tree, right? So each node can have many children. So in this case, you can see if we look at the structure, right, the current nodes has a list of nodes children, right? So you can see that we can have many children, we can have two children, or three children, or four children, so many, right? So in this case, you can see that we have a binary, uh, in this case, a narrative tree. And we want to be able to serialize this into a string. And we use the same string that we serialize. And we sh want to use that same string that we serialize to deserialize it. And what returns is the head or the root node of the narrative tree, right? So in this case, we're going to show you in this video, I'm going to show you how we can do this using that first search and breath first search to solve this problem. You can, we can use breath first search to serialize this or that first search to serialize the tree, but the, how, how we're going to serialize that is very, very important. So let's talk about that first search first, right? Uh, for using that first search to serialize is basically we're going to use a string builder, right? So the string builder will have like a string, right? Um, that we're going to pen each and every single node's value onto it. So we uh, do a DFS kind of like pre-word traversal, right? Pre-word traversal, we get the current node's value, then we get the children's node's value, right? Um, in this case, we're going to traverse the current node. We add the current nodes onto the, the stream builder. We use a comma to separate it. And then we have node three, um, in this case, because we're going down this path. So we have node three. And then we have node five, right? So in this case, once we have node five, we know that this node has no children, has no children. So we're going to do a backtracking. So what we can do is that we can be able to use X symbol, right? Symbolize or null or any other symbols to represent backtracking. So we had a backtrack to the root, which is node three. Node three has another children, which is node six. So we traverse that side. And then we're just going to have um, node six right here. And node six has no children. So we're going to backtrack to the root, which is three. Three, we traverse all the children. So we backtrack to no one. And then once we traverse back to no one, we uh, do a DFS to no two. And then no two has no children, so we backtrack to root. And then we back go, go down to no four. No four has no children, so that's the end, right? So we take the string, what we can do is that we can be able to deserialize this. And we going to have an index pointed here first. We're going to build a current root node, right? We're going to do a DFS. So what we're going to do is that we're going to Go down and we're going to build node three, right? Uh, because we're going to do a DFS, right? So we're going to build a node three. Node three has a children, so we're going to go down and build a node five. Node five, uh, we hit an X, that means we have to backtrack. So in this case, what we're going to do is that uh, we basically just going to backtrack to node three. And node three, we're just going to add another ch child, right? Which is node six. And then we hit X symbol, then we're going to backtrack, and then we're just going to backtrack again because there's not X, um, which is basically the end of this level, right? Which is the end of this uh, branch. So we go back to node one. So node one should have another child, which is node two. And node two, they have no child, and they have no four. Then we backtrack, right? This basically means backtracking. So we have no four. And then in this case, no four has no child. So we just represent, we use X, right? So we backtrack to no one. And then it would pretty much hit the end of the, um, the, the list, right? So in this case, we're just going to return the head node, which is no one. So let's take a look at this in code. So basically what I did here, uh, let's just copy this and paste it here so that you get. So if I run the code, you can see it prints out this, right, which is what I just drew. Um, and then if we analyze the code, right, we start at here, we start at the serialize function, we take the root, right, and then we basically check to see if root is null, if it's null, we return x, right, and then we encode from here, right. And at the end, because you can see this sb, where this stream builder is a global variable. So once we uh, serialize this, we can be able to return it. And we just delete the extra comma at the end. That's why we do this. So for this encode part, basically, we just like I mentioned, we get the current node's value added onto the string builder. Then we traverse its children. Um, in this case, if the children.size is bigger than zero, we're gonna just basically iterate it and then encode it 
basically this encode recursive function, basically doing a DFS down to this branch, encode its children added onto the string builder, and then coming back, right? Um, and then you can see that once it done traversing its children, we're just gonna add X and add an extra comma there, right? That represents basically we're done, we have to go backtracking to the previous level and then traverse its children, right? So, in, so basically this is basically how we encode it recursively, right? So in this case, I can give you an example. Um, in this case, uh, just like the example before, in this case, we going down here, so SB what pen no one, right? And then we traverse its children, three, two, four. So we go down to three, right? And then we start over here. So in this case, we add three onto this, this thing, right? We add a comma, then we do a D, uh, DFS, but we iterate the children, right? We DFS to no five. No five, it goes here again. So we have five here, comma, and then in this case, it has no children. So, right, so we just go to append X, comma there. We backtrack to the, to the root, in this case, no three level. So in this case, no three has not another children, no six. So in this case, we're just going to encode that and then just um, do a DFS, right? So in this case, we add a comma. And then in this case, no six has no children, right? So we put X there, comma, and then so on and so forth, right? So I can continue, but you get the idea. Um, basically, this is how we serialize it, but deserialize it is very similar, right? So in this case, we use a data array and we split it by comma. So notice that when we split, is still strain array, okay? And this is index, um, index starting at index zero, we decode we're using DFS, and then for each and every single recursion stack, we basically increase the index by one. If they equals, right? If this is an X, that means we have to backtrack, right? We just have to return null. Um, we can return any other things to symbolize that we should backtrack, but in this case, we're just returning null. Um, so in this case, we build the children, so in this case, we check to see if index is still less than the length. And then we're just going to decode the child, right? Once we decode the child, in this case, we're just going to see if it's null. If it's not null, we just add it on to the child, ch uh, children array. Otherwise, if it's null, then that means we have to backtrack, right? So we can just break the loop and then we can just continue and we can build a current node. Right, we can be able to pass in the children, right? Because in this case, this constructor takes another parameter for children. Um, so then, in this case, we just return the current node, right? Uh, basically, this is how we serialize it, right? We just do a recursive function to serialize the tree, uh, deserialize the tree, right? So this is how we do it in the DFS func uh, way. The breadth first search way is kind of very similar. Um, we basically um, doing this level by level. Like I think this has a way to serialize it, right? This is an example of serialization of this tree. Um, in this case, we just tr um, like traverse level by level, actually sub level, right? Because in this case, you can see we have no one, we add it on here. We use a null to separate this another level. We, we have to go down to another level now. So we have no two, no three, no four, no five. Okay, once we visit those nodes, we use a null value to separate it. That is, we're going down to another level. And then we have null, right? In this case, no two has null. That means that this node has, um, basically has no children, right? So we use null to separate, that's the end of this sub-level, right? And then we have no six, no seven. Now we use a null value to separate, this is, another, this is the end of the sub-level. Then we have no eight. Use null to represent, this is the end of the sub-level. And, and six and 10, and then we use a null value to represent the end of the sub level, right? And so on and so forth. Um, so what's gonna happen here is we're basically going to use BFS, right? So we use BFS to traverse, we add the current nodes value. And notice that we're gonna use null. So we're gonna add null so that what's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna traverse level by level using a queue, right? We have no one and then we have null. So once we hit null, we know that this is gonna be the next level, right? Um, because usually, you can see, we traverse the size of what we have in our, in our, um, uh, in our queue, right? And then you can see if, if the, the top element is null, we can just append x and then just append comma and just break the, the loop. 
Otherwise, what we can do is we can just add the children, right? So in this case, we iterate the children, we add onto the queue. And then once we um, done with the current sublevel, we can add null onto the queue, right? So that once we visit a null, we can just break the loop and then we can just add an X, add a comma here, right? To separate that, right? Um, and then you can see uh, what we do is that for each iteration, we just append the current nodes value, right? The current nodes value onto the, um, the, the stream builder. At the end, same thing, just like the FS, we just remove the extra comma at the end. But for decode or deserialize, um, it's very similar to uh, what we did in DFS, right? Um, well, not really, but the thing is, what we're doing here is that, well, first of all, we check to see if the first value is null, right? If it's equal to x, we pretty much can return null. Um, and then what we do is that we build a root. We add the root onto the queue, right? We iterate, we're starting from two because in this case, our string will look something like this, right? Where we have one, x, two, three, four, five, x, right? This is the second level. This is basically children of this root, but we use a x to symbolize null, right? So we're starting from index two, which is here, right? Because we already add the root onto the queue already. We already build the root. So then we say i is less than data array the life. So we take the top element out of the queue, which is two. So in this case, we add the children that's low, right? So we, in this case, we um, build a children. So we take that element out, which is no one. And then we just build the children, which is no two, no three, no four. And while the current element does not equal to x, so we continue to add no two, no three, no four, no five um, onto the, the list. Once we hit x, what's gonna happen is that we're just going to break the loop, right? And notice that we're adding this node, not only to the, to the children list, but also to the queue so that we can be able to visit its sub children or its children uh, then, right? So you can see that once we know we visit x, we can break and we in increase the index i by one. And then first dot children is equal to children. So the children that we construct, we already build it. And then what's gonna happen is that we're gonna move on to the next cycle, right? So let's say we have x, six, seven, five. So after this one, right? So we continue, we know that this is x, so this will not work. So we increase the index by one, so we have no six. And then basically we say first.children, which is children, right? So we so no two's children is basically nothing, empty list. And now we move on to uh, the next iteration. We take the top element out, which is no three, right? So no three, um, in this case, um, no three, yeah. So in this case for this index, current index no six does not equal to x. So in this case, we add it, we add it onto the list. So we construct no three, a no six onto the ch children list. And then we also add onto the queue and then we have no seven, right? And then those five. And then once we have an X, we know that this is the end of this sub level. So we just going to add what we have in our list, which is no six, no seven, no five onto the children for no three. And then we're just going to move on to the next element, right? We, we, we pull or talk, take the first element out of the, the queue, which is no four now, and we'll do the same thing, same procedure, right? Until we hit a next X, right? The next null value, then we can be able to um, basically do the same thing. Do the, uh, um, just build the children, add it onto the current nodes value, uh, current nodes children, and then we move on to the next iteration, right? So this is basically how we'd be able, be able to decode um, the, uh, the, the, the encoded data to string, right? Uh, to tree, right? So there you have it and thank you for watching.